Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our channel right here on YouTube at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it and I'd be able to deliver watches like this to your inbox every day. If you like our watches, see this one and it's 1700 friends on thewatchbox.com, 24 hours a day, buy, trade and sell pre-owned luxury and vintage watches on thewatchbox.com. Today we're discussing the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Flyback Chronograph clearly illustrating that between the two founders of the modern dive watch genre and the modern dive watch platonic form, Rolex and Blancpain, well Blancpain has just done more with its founding father. You can get it as a tourbillon, as a chronograph, as a straight diver, in so many metals and so many forms, whereas the sub for the most part is the sub, and that's a difference in philosophy that I dig, because this watch puts it all together. A classic image from a timeless model line and a great manufacturer with an easy aspect about the wrist. For a smaller wrist, this is a big watch that wears compact. 45 millimeters across the round of the case, not including chronograph pushers, crown, or crown guard. The timepiece is a relatively manageable 15.6 millimeters thick. It won't fit underneath a dress sleeve, but it will fit underneath the jacket cuff above. Lug to lug, it's nice and compact. 50 millimeters means that you can wear this watch easily on a small wrist. And I define a small male wrist as about 14 to 16 and a half centimeters circumference. This watch at 50 millimeters is right on the threshold that I consider to be the maximum for use on a small male wrist. 50 millimeters or fewer, this one checks the box. You'll also note that the lugs are very short cropped, so let me give you one broad profile shot getaway as far as I can. You can see it looks organic, it fits well with a handsome proportion, it sits securely. Let's take a look at why that is. The lugs are short, they downturn rather dramatically, so they don't extend that far beyond the case, and they turn almost 90 degrees from the horizontal case band. The strap is substantial, thick, you can see sheer cut, so it shows its layers of construction. It has a contrasting stitch, and this light reddish brown, almost adobe, is a handsome complement to the satin finished red gold of the case, and it is red gold. Contrasting stitch, on the underside a very supple calfskin, this is a new strap, and the clasp is a wonderfully upscale piece to match a wonderfully upscale watch. First, it's nicely made. Handsome, all of satin finish internally. You can see one of the swing arms acts as a spring system for the trigger release. Not friction fit and not fitted with a cheap clamshell. It's not a pin buckle either. This is exactly how an expensive watch should be outfitted. Not just a clasp, but a great clasp. Now you can also note that with the twin fold, it doesn't have the one big up and over fold of a normal deployant that tends to pinch a smaller wrist. If you have a smaller wrist, you're going to want a twin fold, blanc -pont, getting it done. Moreover, the heft of this clasp is excellent. If you like to wear your watches loose, having that clasp on the bottom is kind of like having a nice big bracelet to counterbalance the watch. If you wear your watch loose, it's less likely to try to hula hoop around your wrist because of that heavy clasp counterweighting it. Think of it as the keel of a sailboat. Now let's get super close because we're done with the wrist shots. Okay, the case. All of satin finish, it helps to blunt some of the impact of the red gold in conjunction with the sheer size of the case. A big case in polished red gold would be overpowering. It would be a little bit much for me. The satin finish is well chosen and it helps to make the watch, I think, a beautiful brute. It has a beauty to it. It has a, a balanced reserve about it. It could have gone crazy. And if you want to see what crazy looks like, crazy is this tourbillon 50 fathoms in high polished red gold. That's crazy. That's how red gold was done in the 2000s. And I feel today, this is how red gold should be done in a more reserved era. Still exuberant, just not deliriously silly. Now, also take a look at how the satin is executed. It's vertical across the case, which is different from the traditional linear sweep across the case band that you generally see, and you'll see the same treatment lavished on the crown, as well as chronograph pushers and the periphery of the bezel. The bezel is a wonderful piece because first, it looks the business with a cambered sapphire atop. It's almost like a lenticular dewdrop, a, a giant round perpetual dewdrop around the calibrations of the bezel, magnifying it and creating a permanent gloss. It also means that the fully luminescent paint underneath for calibrations of all indices and numerals can't be scratched off. So you have the same scratch resistant that you get on the crystal itself. Now you can move the, the bezel to align with the minute hand. Now you've got a zero to 60 minute count up timer. It's a wonderful thing because it's easier to see than a chronograph. And just in case you have any doubts about the legibility of a dive watch 
versus a conventional chronograph, consider that this overseas generation two chronograph has an enlarged counter that's considered to be a large minutes indicator by the standards of a conventional mechanical chronograph. You want a dive bezel because it's a hell of a lot easier to read. Now, if you want to time something longer than 60 minutes, you do have a chronograph. And though the pushers appear to be screw down, they're dummy screw downs, meaning you can access them at any time. So if you want to time something long, use the chronograph. If you want to time something short, use the bezel. And if you want to time two things at once, up to 60 minutes, you can actually time the two concurrently using the bezel and the chronograph. You'll also note that the Blancpain has a distinctive voice and a distinctive feel. It's a little bit more refined. It's not like the rat -a tat tat machine gun fire that you'll get from a Panerai Luminor submersible or an Omega Seamaster Professional Planet Ocean, but it's distinct, it's premium in its feel, and it is also distinctive in its sound. You know it's a 50 fathoms. The dial underneath a wonderfully cambered sapphire has a little bit of off-axis distortion. Thanks to the domed sapphire, it looks almost like the thermoplastic that would have been used on a 50 fathoms of the 50s, 60s, or 70s. All of the indices, as well as Arabic numeral 12, are rose gold and applied. Hands at center, as well as for sub-registers, also rose gold. There's a slight countersink to the sub-registers, and the hour track, if I can show this to advantage, the hour track is somewhat displaced from the plane of the center dial to give another focal plane, and there's handsome and easily legible white on black printing throughout. Now, you can't quite see it because it's hidden underneath the minutes hand, so I'm going to quickly move the minutes hand, but there is a nicely inconspicuous monotone black date disc at 6 o'clock. You'll also note that the dial, fully luminescent right down to the constant seconds hand, gives you plenty of legibility in the dark. There will be a loom shot. It will be spectacular. Inside, powering all that finery, by the way, fly back chronograph, reset and restart with a single push of the pusher at 4 o'clock. You do not need to stop, start, and reset here. One push is all it takes to start timing. Excellent for timing two events in rapid succession. When you don't have time to stop, reset, and restart, a flyback is excellent. Solid case back, which means you get a lot of extra gold compared to a sapphire. Underneath, there is a paramagnetic soft iron cage that helps to improve the anti-magnetic properties of the movement, and it is Blancpain caliber F-185, which is made for Blancpain by its movement partner, Frédéric Piguet. Now, you ask, is that truly an in-house movement? Well, you tell me. It's made to Blancpain specifications. It's built by a manufacturer that is now called Manufacture Blancpain and works intimately with the Blancpain brand. Moreover, the two were sold as a unit to Swatch Group in the early 1990s, and when Blancpain was resurrected by Jean-Claude Biver and his partner, a certain Jean-Jacques Piguet, in the early 1980s, the two companies were in business from the start. So just as old Rolex movements were actually designed by Rolex and made to Rolex's spec by Aigler, I consider this Frédéric Piguet to be an in-house Blancpain caliber. Now, it has a lot of advantages. First, there's the flyback functionality. Then there's the quick set date. It's automatic winding with efficient unidirectional action, a 21,600 vibration per hour beat rate. It's also an integrated automatic, so it's a thin caliber, nicely finished, with a vertical clutch and column wheel tandem. The Vertical clutch lets you leave the chronograph engaged. If you like that constant seconds hand at center for matching the minutes and hours, just leave it running. Thanks to the vertical clutch, there's no additional wear or tear on the mechanism. And you also note with a vertical clutch, there's no jump to the chronograph seconds hand when you start it, unlike a lateral clutch. Start up a Zenith L Primero sometime, and you'll note that you've got two seconds sometimes one and a half already on the board when you press the start button. Now there's another advantage because of the column wheel, it's very crisp. You hear and feel a light mechanical tick. It's a more expensive and traditional and slightly more challenging way to tune a chronograph. Compared to the cam, it's more time consuming and more costly, but it's appropriate to this price point and the stature of Blancpain. Still 300 meters water resistant. This one has a screw down crown and again, simulated screw down pushers, so they're always accessible. You can see this watch and make it yours on our website. And we're back with the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Flyback Chronograph Reference 5085. As you can see, it's essentially indistinguishable from the standard 50 Fathoms with a few exceptions. First, no quarter Arabics, just 12. Second, every indication of the chronograph, even the constant second subdial, fully luminescent. Blancpain gives you full functionality of the watch, even if you can't quite read the scales of the dial. And of course, the 
enormous sapphire capped dive bezel gives this watch a one of a kind, immediately recognizable, even iconic loom shot. You can see this one with box papers accessories by the light of day on our website.